Thank you. Just, just explain how it came about. Well, over the Donington weekend, he really impressed me, and, well, you can remember we were talking about it. And he just enjoyed his racing so much, and the sort of amount of enthusiasm that he had. And I thought it'd be a good thing to do something for him. So I got onto Suzuki's and asked if uh, they'd lend him a bike, and they said yes, he could have my old bike. And that came straight out of the museum? Yeah, it, it did, and uh, they threw a new engine in it, and um, got some good tyres and that. So I just thought it was really important because motorcycle racing is not getting very good crowds over here at the moment, and I thought a guy like that that entertains the way he does, he really does, it would be a nice thing to Worth his it. waiting. That's sure. not all you did for him, though. You paid his airfare, didn't you, from Well, Houston? yeah. He was supposed to have a deal with the promoters here, and they said they couldn't afford it, so I fronted for his airfare. You're not going to go into management, are you? <laughs> I've got enough trouble as it is there doing... No, I'm not. You know, this is just a one-off deal to try and help motorcycle racing because it did a lot for me and I just thought it was a chance for me to do something for it. I think you see a little bit of yourself in Kevin, don't you? Yes, I do really because he does tend to enjoy life quite a lot and uh, he won't do the sport any harm at all. All right, well, what about the man himself, Kevin Schwantz, riding a Grand Prix bike for the first time here this afternoon and Gary Newbon talked to him a little earlier down at the pits. <laughs> Kevin, how have you experienced the impact you've made after the Donington meeting in this country? Well, the uh, impact was, was pretty, pretty amazing to me because of all the TV coverage. Um, I was walking through the Gatwick Airport and was noticed by probably half a dozen people. Just, uh, just from you know, being seen on TV in America, we never get any TV time, so we're not really recognized over there unless, unless someone's an avid bike fan, they don't really know who you are. So you fancy riding over here regularly then, maybe? Uh, it's nice, you know, being able to, to, to do a race where, you know, people get to watch it on TV and it helps, also helps the sport of motorcycling. It helps, you know, it, everybody knows that it's a good sport. You know, you can watch it on TV and, and see how things really happen. Well, you're a real star at Donington, but are you going to be a star or a flop here when you're riding on machines you've never experienced before? Well, let's hope I can be a star, but uh, these guys are going pretty fast on those 500s, and it's the first time I've ever ridden one. Uh, it's the first race today. I'm just going to have to go out and, and see how I can do. I was pretty close with them in practice just then, so hopefully a few adjustments on the suspension on the bike, and uh, if I can just keep, keep thinking straight and not, not, not try and do it all in one corner, I think I'll be okay. Yes, I'm sure he will. Mobbed at Gatwick, eh? Well, Schwantz coming up uh, later in the main event of the day, the Spring Cup. That's around 3.40. We'll also be seeing the 200 day here at Mallory Park, the 500cc Spring Cup. Our chance to see how Roger Burnett and Roger Marshall manage against Kevin Schwantz, the star of this meeting. Don't forget, Schwantz is on a 500cc bike for the first time. The question is, can he beat our boys at their own game? Over now to Chris Carter and Peter Clifford. So, 15 laps of action ahead of us and what a cracking race this should prove to be. In pole position, after practice this morning, Paul Lewis, the wild man from Australia, who's calmed down just a fraction on the Skull Bandit Suzuki. Next to him, the two Rothmans Honda Britain men, Roger Marshall, Roger Manette. Then, the American sensation of Easter, Kevin Schwantz, on a bits and pieces Suzuki. Then, race one, and Alan Jeffrey, the noise from the engines rise to a crescendo, they're off. The start on number four, Paul Lewis, at the front of the field. And it's Lewis who leads Roger Marshall, number 11, is in second place. Number five, Trevor Nation, is pushed back to fourth spot by Mark Phillips. The uh, privateer from Lincoln, known, uh, in fact, it actually has its turn on his leathers, captain. It's Mark Phillips then, the Lincoln boy there in the yellow leathers. Paul Lewis, the Australian, out in front. And Lewis is going round the outside. Lewis looking for a way through. Paul Lewis, the leader. Then it's Roger Marshall. Mark Phillips has one of them. No, he doesn't. He's in trouble. And Mark Phillips nearly went from third to probably on his ear. And Seven Nation nips through to grab third place from Mark Phillips. Paul Lewis and Roger Marshall disputing the lead down Devil's Elbow. Paul Lewis, Roger Marshall, Seven Nation, Mark Phillips. Then it's Kevin Schwantz. Kevin Schwantz is in fifth place. And Paul Lewis, the young Australian on the skull band, it's Suzuki, very, very wide indeed. Well, that was a wide old line, Peter. Yes, he's uh, definitely trying to get away from Marshall in these early laps, but unless he's got some different lines for everybody else around Mallory Park, he's getting in a bit over his head going into the corners. And Marshall closes up, looks for the inside line. Lewis holds him on. Lewis on the Suzuki, Marshall on the Honda, first and second as they go to the hairpin. And again, Marshall looks and thinks about overtaking 
changes his mind and just tightens on the brake and Trevor Nation had a bit of a coming together there with somebody and Trevor Nation and Mark Phillips Kevin Schwantz go through there still in fifth place and Paul Lewis almost crashed there Paul Lewis trying so hard almost crashed at Devil's Elbow and that is not a place to fall off at Yes, that was Lewis trying to get on the power coming out of the new hair pit, new chicane. And he just got on the power too terribly hard and the back end slid away. And he's picking a very, very wide line round there. And Roger Marshall hardly knows which side of him to try and go. And I think Roger Marshall would prefer to be in front of him than behind him at the moment. Paul Lewis, the Australian, on the Skull Bentley machine leads. Roger Marshall in second place and a real ding-dong scrap. Well, FCC Builders, the sponsors of Keith Ewan, have come up with a hunt, and Roger Marshall goes through on the inside. Marshall takes the lead. I was just saying that FCC Builders have come up with a £150 special prize to whoever sets the fastest lap in this race or the sidecar race. And the way Marshall and Lewis are going, they're really going to be in with a chance of lifting that money. Yes, and now Lewis is right tucked in behind Marshall, and Lewis very good at chasing other riders. Schwantz in fourth place now. Kevin Schwantz in fourth place behind Trevor Nation. Marshall then the leader. Paul Lewis in second place. And Lewis very, very wide indeed. And Schwantz there in fourth spot. Trying to find a way past Trevor Nation. And Schwantz, I'm sure, is desperate not to let these two characters get ahead of him. This is Lewis in second place. There's the first and second. And Nation and Swanson, Mark Phillips right with him. And that looks like Roger Burnett. It is Roger Burnett and Schwantz looking for the inside line. This is the view that Roger Burnett sees as he goes through the hairpin. And Schwantz has gone through to third place. Ahead of Trevor Nation. There's Mark Phillips ahead of Roger Burnett. The on-bike camera on the Rossman on the Brit machine. And Lewis is close again with Roger Marshall. Marshall, Lewis, look at that wide line that Paul Lewis takes. And Schwantz is getting closer. Kevin Schwantz is getting closer. And I think that Louis is doing that line on purpose. It may be smoother out there, outside the inner bumps, and he's getting perhaps good drive out of the corner, and he feels that the wide line, although it's a lot longer way round, is the faster manoeuvre. And Kevin Schwantz, the 21-year-old Sexton, is closing yard by yard by yard. And there he is in the picture now. It's a new bike for him, a new circuit, of course. And he's learning every second. Well, Barry Sheen, what do you think of Kevin Schwantz at the moment? Oh, my heart's beating so fast, I can't really say anything. He's going so well, and he's very, very smooth around Gerrard's. Um, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. Um, Paul Lewis is running very, very wide on Gerrard, so uh, I think he's trying a little bit too hard. So, Kevin Schwantz there very much in the picture he was down in fifth place at the end of the first lap he was all he pulled back an awful lot of ground to catch these two men and i suppose kevin now will probably just watch them he's still learning his way around mallory park he didn't get any practice in on wednesday they were still building the bike and he had some practice on thursday Schwantz closes right up on paul lewis provided marshall doesn't get too far away i would imagine that Schwantz will be happy just to stay there in third place. Marshall the leader, Lewis in second spot, Kevin Schwantz in the third position. Then it's Roger Burnett, then Mark Phillips, then Trevor Nation. So Roger Burnett is on the charge as well. He's up to fourth place. And of course, with the final round of the Motor 3 Series here at Mallory tomorrow, and Ron Haslam, who will miss that race, but will borrow Eero Hyvarinen's 500 Honda to do the race of the year, so Haslam will race tomorrow. Roger Burnett and Roger Marshall are the men who will be looking to get in a bit of practice for that final round of the Motor 3 tomorrow. Marshall pulling away just a little bit now, so maybe Schwantz will start thinking of trying to find a way past Lewis. Schwantz, like all Americans, isn't interested in second place. For Americans, there's only one result, and that's victory. Yes, and Schwantz really has to get past Lewis and, Lewis and learn something from Marshall, because it's Marshall who he's going to have to pass in the closing stages if he's going to win this one. Seven laps completed. Roger Marshall, the leader. Paul Lewis in second place. Kevin Schwantz is third. Roger Burnett is in fourth place. Mark Phillips riding superbly is fifth. And Trevor Nation is in sixth spot. 
and we've already seen Marshall pass one tail end and now this could be very much the Swansea's disadvantage because Marshall's got plenty of laps around Murray Park. He knows the alternative lines anywhere that he can go to pass the tail ender. Schwantz has really probably only had time to pick out the one racing line. And if he's put out set by back markers, that could be trouble. And you can see Schwantz has lost a little bit of ground. Still there in third place, still in the picture. Oh, look at him closing up there on the braking. And Roger Burnett also, he just caught a glimpse of him in the picture. It's Marshall. There is Lewis. There comes Schwantz, and here is Roger Burnett, then it's Mark Phillips, Trevor Nation dropping back just a little bit. And Lewis has gone through, Paul Lewis has regained the lead, and Marshall is pushed back to second spot. Roger Marshall, five times a British champion, Paul Lewis, seven times an Australian champion. And Lewis, the man who will uh, spearhead the Skull Bandit Suzuki Grand Prix Challenge. And Lewis just suddenly seemed to find 10 miles an hour as he wheelies the Skull Bandit Suzuki up to the hairpin. And really suddenly came from nowhere to flash past Marshall. But here is Schwantz. Look at Schwantz. He's there as well. And Roger Burnett is very much in the picture now. Look at Schwantz just reeling in Marshall. Any minute now we can expect Schwantz to look for a way past. Lewis the leader. Marshall second. Schwantz third. Burnett fourth. Mark Phillips fifth. Trevor Nation, number five, in six spot. They're passing to slower men, going round Gerard's men. Less than three quarters of a second between first and the third at the end of that lap. Now, this is Lewis on the carbon fibre frame. Suzuki, the frame built in England. He's got Michelin tyres on that, ahead of the two Dunlop shud machines behind him. Lewis, Marshall, Hewan. Lewis the leader then, Marshall second and Schwantz will try to get the man's name right for him and Schwantz is closing Kevin Schwantz is looking for a charge and here comes Burnett there is Roger Burnett in fourth place and that is how Burnett sees that trio ahead. This is the view from the on-bike camera coming out of Gerard Bend, chasing down the back straight. And psychologically, Burnett has the advantage with these three men in front. You can see him close up on Schwantz. It's an easier for him to steal a yard at every corner when he knows the men who are in front of him. Different lines going into the hairpin. Schwantz goes through. You can see Schwantz takes the lead. And Paul Lewis dives back through on another line. And Schwantz is the leader. Kevin Schwantz. Well, what a sensational manoeuvre. And we saw it all as Roger Burnett saw it. Absolutely superb. And Lewis goes back. Lewis is in front. Schwantz pushed back to second place. And Schwantz is holding the tighter line on the inside. And he's pushing Lewis out. And Schwantz goes back to take the lead. Schwantz has been absolutely incredible on the break up to the hairpin on every lap, gaining 10 yards on them. And Burnett is coming now at the tail of that four. It's a four-way dice. They're on the, uh, the 12th lap. They've done 11 of this 15-lap race. And the, a blanket will cover them as they go into the hairpin. Schwantz, Lewis, Marshall and Burnett. 21 years of age, the Texan, and the front goes wide, and Lewis seizes the opportunity to go through. What? Sorry, Barry, a hero, Kevin Schwantz, a hero at the moment. Yeah, well, Kevin's going remarkably well. He seems to be having a lot of trouble getting out the hairpin. I don't think the um, bike, the engine's running too well out the hairpin, and he's losing a hell of a lot of ground there, but... He's uh, riding very, very smoothly, and he's exceptionally good on the brakes. I mean, don't forget, this guy has never ridden this bike before. He's never ridden this type of bike before. He's never seen the racetrack before, and I think he's doing remarkably well. Well, I think we all agree that, and there goes Roger Burnett diving through to take third place as a slower man has a, a quadruple flight as the four men go past him. And again, this is what the on-bike camera looks like. Lewis goes across the bow of Burnett. And it looks as though Burnett might have gone through to second place. There's only Lewis ahead of him at the moment. So Swanson has been pushed back to third spot. 
Lewis then from Roger Burnett along the pit straight into Gerrard and there we can see the story from another camera and Lewis beginning to pull away Paul Lewis pulling away Roger Burnett then Kevin Scott then Roger Marshall Yes, great riding from Burnett on the uh, Rothman Tonda as well. The three men in front were battling it out, stealing each other's line. He just played a waiting game and gradually stole up on them and now takes a very good second place. I don't think it'll be long before he's up with Lewis and he's closing on him already. And a tail ender gets in the way and Burnett sees it so does front. Paul Lewis waited his time. Oh, and that poor man is in the middle of the most hectic scrap you can possibly imagine. And Schwantz goes back to fourth. Kevin Schwantz didn't really know what was going on then. Poor old Kevin, a tail ender, got very much in the way. And Burnett beats it for last lap, and Lewis looks to go through. Marshall is third, Schwantz is fourth. There is Mark Phillips, and another tail ender. All oh, Paul Lewis bobbing and weaving and charging all over the place. But Roger Burnett is there, and Paul Lewis is in second place. Kevin Schwantz push back to fourth place and Lewis has a big tank stopper and Marshall goes through Lewis has to shut down and Schwantz goes through into third place Lewis lost it all when the front end slid away coming out of Gerrard's and he had to button off to get back the bike back under control F into the uh, hairpin for the final time and Schwantz goes through into second place passing Marshall but Marshall's got the inside line and Schwantz Charges back, pushes back, a tail ender gets in the way. Burnett is going to win, and Schwantz is going to be second. Roger Burnett is going to win. Schwantz is second, Marshall is third, Paul Lewis fourth, Mark Phillips fifth. What a tremendous race. Wow, Roger Burnett, what a marvellous ride from Roger Burnett. He was well behind. I'm just trying to see on the lap chart where Roger Burnett was. He was in sixth place, but well out of contention. Burnett made time, made his moves, went through from fourth to second of the 13th lap. Schwantz, well, what a hero the American was, taking second place. Third was Roger Marshall. Fourth uh, was Paul Lewis, and Lewis, of course, a leader on five, six laps in this 15-lap race. Confirmation then, Roger Burnett, the winner. What a tremendous winner, too of a dramatic 500cc Spring Cup. Second, Kevin Schwantz riding a 500cc two-stroke for the first time, making his debut at Mallory Park. And in third place, Roger Marshall. Well, that was absolutely sensational. Fourth, Paul Lewis, and uh, Paul Lewis really must have wondered what happened to him. He did everything right. So, Roger Burnett, the winner of a dramatic race, and a hero, certainly a hero, but what a ride from Kevin Schwantz. Schwantz taking second place, Roger Marshall third, and Paul Lewis fourth. Well, down on the start line is Gary Newbon waiting to talk to Roger Burnett. Roger, that was a tremendous race. Thanks, Gary. At one stage, you must have thought you weren't going to have a chance of winning. Well, anybody that watches me closely knows that I'm never one to make a flying and I like to get my tyres really warm and to settle myself down and all the time I could see them just edging away and I thought, no, don't, don't uh, panic, just relax. I just relaxed and, and I managed to catch them back up and then once I caught them back up, I, I came, wanted to go through and went through, so. The, the bunch up helped you as well? Yeah, um, it did. Unfortunately, they're herping on one lap. I went in miles too fast. Um, my fork seal's leaking and it went onto my brake pads and I went into herping too fast and just touched Kevin Schwartz, but but I don't think he'll mind. No, he did tremendously well. He'd never been on that bike before, and he looked as if he was going to win it. He was riding fantastic. Um, his lack of circuit knowledge just showed a little bit, but I'm sure he'll be right there tomorrow. And Paul Lewis, who uh, seemed to dice uh, with a bit of luck hit now and again. Well, Paul was riding hard as well. Everybody was riding good. I just seemed to have the lucky brakes and, and managed to get through where it counted. So that's racing, I suppose. A tremendous performance anyway. I'm delighted. I hope the camera work came over. Yeah, well. The camera work was very good. good, actually. good we had, we nice. had the odd, odd flutter there while we're still getting used to it, but uh, it was a great view from that angle. Thank you very much. Thanks. Well done. I don't know about patriotism. This guy was jumping up and down alongside me, cheering on the American, but in fact, you discovered Burnett and Schwantz in a sense. Well, in a roundabout. Modesty apart. Uh, no, a roundabout way uh, at the end of 1984. 
Um, I thought that Roger Burnett was the best English guy around, and I gave him the chance to ride my bike. And uh, then Honda's picked him up, so he's reaping the benefits now. He's so very people did listen to you? Yeah, oh, sure. did spot the talent. And you think he's a future world champion, do you, I do, Roger? yeah, I really do. He's uh, the most presentable guy that we have media-wise, and uh, he's certainly got the talent, and above all, he's got the brains. I guess you thought when you retired from riding that all the excitement was over, but you were getting pretty oh worked out there, weren't you? <laughs> I can believe I, my heart's still thumping now. Yeah, it was exciting because uh, I didn't want anything to go wrong. I didn't want Kevin to fall down or anybody bang into him. And it, it's nice, you know, it's good for a guy that is so keen and puts a lot into his racing to get a good result. He was uh, outbreaking everybody into the mm. hairpin, but he wasn't coming out, he was losing it, coming out of the hairpin yeah, each I, time, wasn't the it? The thing is, um, that bike is quite an old bike, it doesn't have the latest type engine, and it's very difficult to get it out of the hairpin. Now. So what will he do on a good bike, eh? God only knows. I think he'd uh, surprise a lot of people, actually. You think he'll be pleased with that? I hope so. I can't wait to go back up and see him. All right, well, thank you very much indeed, Barry. Right, the uh, second stage of the Spring Cup is the 200